Um, Pat, I might start with yourself. Uh, how do you react to this call from Dr Tony Houlihan yesterday for travellers to, to cancel their holidays abroad? Well, I can understand uh, where the doctor is coming from as such totally. If you're in the medical profession and you watched the, the great programme last night on RTE, you'd certainly be saying that. And, and I get totally what he's saying. But, you know, you have to look at two sides of it. And the, the biggest problem, the biggest problem is that the government is saying on one hand to go. Uh, in other words, they're allowing flights to go. And on the other hand, saying uh, you're, you're not to go and you have a quarantine. Our solution, our suggestion to the government is that they cancel all those flights and they refund the customers all their money because they're saying you are not to go. And the second solution, if that does not work, if the government will not take on the airlines, because the airlines are dictating the pace here. There are 80 flights going from Dublin tomorrow. There are 15 flights from Cork. There are 8 or 10 from Shannon and 5 and 7 from Knock. Mm. So the government is given permission to fly. And yes, on the other hand, they're saying you're not to fly. Now, this has been going on, Sarah, for weeks and weeks and months. We started out this situation with the department last March. And no decision has been made by anybody. Yes, the easy solution is saying not to go. And we understand that. We understand you cannot put life in danger. You cannot do that. But we've got to make a decision. If the government says you're not to go cancel the flights and refund the money to all those thousands of consumers. Well, the government can't cancel flights though, can it? They're private companies that are running those flights. Well, the, the government control the licences. Okay. So, I, I mean, they, they make a decision on but that. Pull the licence from the airline companies? Well, well, I, I, I don't know, but but they are given permission. They are given permission to fly and, and, and they're saying not fly. I mean, the consumer is, is, is the meat in the sandwich here. And also in the travel industry, we're, we're the same as such. But look, we'll get on, we'll look after our consumers as such. And if the government do that, they will naturally enough have to bail us out because we are, we are guaranteed by the government. But right, the so you want have, flights to be cancelled on the basis that then at least people will get their money back? 100%. And that is clear. That is clear. The, the but would it not be better for yourself and your industry to have the air bridges open, which is what the yes, government well, is talking that about is, doing? Yes, yes. That, that's our, our, our second suggestion. And certainly the air bridges. Again, there's no clarity on the air bridges. Sarah, this stuff should have been decided a long, long time ago. Mm. We're now coming up to the 9th of July. There's no decision made on what countries... For example, it's not like going out and turning the cap on in one's kitchen. It has to be organised. And, and what, what, what says you're green? What says you're red? Like, for example, the obvious place at the moment, as we see, US would be red. The UK is not doing great. And other countries are, are the same situation. But decisions have to be made by the government here and now. All right. So we are expecting some news on the air bridges next week, Pat, I think, or in, in around the 9th of July, whether that's next week or not, I think it is. Um, so would you be happy then if the government comes out next week and says, this is the list of green countries that you can fly to um, and when you come back, you won't have to quarantine? Would that, would that be acceptable? Well, well, on three conditions. One, that the airports are 100% safe. Two, that the aircraft and the airlines say what, what, does what it says on the tin, that people are safe. And three, that the countries that are going to have a very, very low uh, case situation. I mean, what, what bar are they setting to say, right, you're green and you're red? Uh, I believe from our European contacts, that they're going to take an average over 14 days with, with the number of cases, set the bar and say you're in and you're out. I think that's the way the air bridges will go. Uh, we're certainly, we're encouraging them all right, but I think we're saying to them, you know, the back end of the year and, and, and next year, and many have switched, Sarah, uh, they have been booked, they have switched to later on in the year or, or to uh, 2021. On the quarantine situation, I mean, can I just go back there for a moment to that? And it is very, very loose. But can, can we not be told of what other countries, how many people were involved in, in Iraq, in the, in the Iraq situation? How many people were involved there? Ireland is, is not, uh, people don't go on holidays to Iraq mainly as such. So what other countries, we did not get any detail of what other countries uh, f from the travel situation brought, br brought in the suspected disease. We would like to know that. And what difference and, and would then it make we have to a clear picture. 
Pardon? What difference would it make to know where people Well, it would, know, it would know that, that for example, if, if it's X or Y, that there is an issue there and it would flag that. All right. Um, as I said, we're also joined by Kim Roberts on the line. Kim, what do, what do you make of this in, in terms of the, the risk in, in foreign travel? Uh, should people go or not? What about, you know, if you have relatives in, in Britain or you're living in Britain and you want to come home? Absolutely. I mean, I have relatives.